Hi everybody and welcome back to the channel and for those of you that are new, this is your first visit, a very, very warm welcome indeed. Now today is a very exciting day. We have got to do one of the biggest reviews I think we've ever had the chance to do. It's certainly the one that I've been looking forward to the most for at least 12 months, if not more. I can't believe I'm about to say this, but here in my hands, I have a brand spanking new in a box, Garmin Descent Mark II i it's finally here. Now, the scuba world pretty much expected this to be launched at DEMA in November 2019. It didn't materialize and a lot of people were asking questions straight after the event. Heard some rumors that it was gonna be planned for March 2020. That's pretty much when the whole world went into utter madness and let's be honest, who's gonna launch a new dive computer at the start of a worldwide pandemic? I then saw uh, on a number of scuba forums that July was being the date that was being banded around. Again, it didn't materialize and the eagle-eyed amongst you might have saw that about three or four weeks ago, a Garmin pod uh, was photographed on a set of regs on a dive tank on a dive boat in Hawaii. Now, I don't know if that was a planned leak to get the world talking about it again, or whether someone was being a little bit careless. Needless to say, it did the trick. Now, why am I so excited about this? Well, if you remember last year, we did the big review video where I compared the Descent Mark I, the Shearwater Terek, the Sunto D5, and the ratio I dive color easy. Now, out of those four, the Garmin was actually by far my favorite, and I actually wanted it to win out of the comparison video. Uh, if you haven't seen it, I'll pop a link at the end of this video, and I'll pop it in the description down below. But there was two fundamental flaws that I just couldn't let go with the Garmin Descent. Um, this is what I said in actual fact. Niggle number one, screen size. I found the viewable screen size just a little bit too small. There's a band that goes around the edge between the bezel and the viewable screen side. There's a, there's a band I thought was just too thick. Now I get that Garmin don't want to make the unit any bigger because it then makes it less viable as an everyday smart stroke fitness watch. However, for me, the viewable screen was just a little bit too small underwater. Niggle number two, the Garmin Descent does not have air integration. Now, I know a lot of people that don't have air integration. I know a lot of people that don't care that it doesn't have air integration. Yes, I always dive with a working SPG, but guys, this is 2019 now. Pretty much everything has air integration these days, and I can't believe that this doesn't. I hope and I pray that the Garmin Descent Mark II, if and when it ever appears, has that on it. Now, they were the only two niggles that I had, but for me, they were fundamental flaws. You want to be able to see the dive computer when you're underwater. And let's be honest, everyone wants air integration these days. And for me, it just, it just, didn't, it just didn't make the cut. I'm led to believe that the Mark II does have a bigger screen, a bigger viewable screen. And guys, this is a Mark II I. I stands for integration. This little baby finally has air integration. Now, most dive computers use a VHF format to connect the dive computer to the transmitter in terms of connectivity to your pod. Garmin are world famous for their sonar technology and a lot of their mapping and GPS stuff. So I believe that this has um, some of their sonar technology. Now, this has the potential to be absolutely jaw dropping. Anyway, I'm rabbiting now, so let me get this little baby open. Oh. <sighs> Straight away, you're hit with that. If you've ever bought a new car or got into a new car and you smell that new car smell, straight away you just get that, that sense of, oh, it smells so good. I mean, I've not even taken the protective film off of the uh, dive computer. Let's, oh, it's just gonna be so, so satisfying to so many people. Wow, that looks so smart. This has got the titanium uh, bezel and titanium back. But it, honestly, that looks so smart. What's it's got on the back? Sapphire glass, DLC titanium, air integrated, descent mark to 100 meters. 
to the first thing I noticed as well, when you push the buttons, they, they haven't got that, um, sometimes with a dive computer, because you you kind of got a, a, the, the button has a pin on it that needs to go into the water with housing, you kind of feel you've got that mechanical pressure. This, this feels uh, more like it's kind of like one of those magnetic buttons that you kind of get. But I see here's something that looks super smart. I'm getting the little charge logo up, so I need to get this charged, so I won't um, dive into that now. Let's take a look at what else is in the box. So, we have a charge cable, and interestingly, with the Mark 1, you almost had a, like a little cradle that the dive, uh, dive computer sat in. Um, I've seen this on a couple of dive computers, but it's almost like a, um, a crocodile clip kind of thing with the connectors that will connect onto the connection at the back and then a little grip that sits on the front, so it kind of grips onto the side of the dive computer. But we've got a charge cable. Uh, we have the silicon extension strap and the Garmin Mark II uses the same Quick Fit 26 uh, that was used on the Mark 1, so the um, quick release and connecting straps uh, that we um, profiled on the Mark 1, definitely on the Mark 2. And obviously you get the you get the longer extension strap um, and that's really to sort of fit round uh, wetsuits, uh, sorry, thicker wetsuits and dry suits. Uh, and now the only other thing in the box is a important safety and product information guide. Um, that's just obviously going to be, uh, I think, relatively common sense, but uh, always read your safety guide and there is a instruction manual in a number of different languages i'm not going to refer to this if you've watched our videos you'll know that i don't really like to sit and read for an instruction manual i want a product to be self-explanatory so i like to try and work it out uh, myself uh, and that's it that's actually quite pleasing it's so often that you open a, um, a product and you've got a number of different pamphlets you get a, a cd a compact disc to um, load into your uh, your computer and a number of different bits of paraphernalia so two little booklets charge cable the longer extension strap and the dive computer itself nice and simple the garmin descent mark one was based on the fenix 5 um, i believe the mark 2 is based on the fenix 6 now i've used the fenix 6 for um, sports and activity over the last few months so if that is the case, this, this should be relatively straightforward for me to get set up. Very, very much looking forward to it. I'm going to go and do that before I bore you all to death. So I'm going to go and get this charged up, get it all set up, and I'll come back to you in a minute. Right, now, where do I start? Well, I've been using this for the last three days. I've got all the settings set to how I want them. I've been for a run with it, uh, and I'm pretty comfortable with how it all works. One thing I will call out is that when you turn the Garmin Descent Mark II on for the first time, it asks you to download the Garmin Dive app. I did that, I downloaded it onto my phone, but I then discovered that because the Garmin Descent Mark II doesn't launch until Wednesday the 21st of October, today is Sunday the 18th of October 2020, now, because it doesn't launch until Wednesday, um, it's the, the, the Mark II isn't actually discoverable in any of the dive. Um, uh, sorry, in any of the Garmin apps. I couldn't even find it in the Connect app, so I haven't. I haven't actually been able to connect it to any of the apps yet. So, one hundred percent. Once, once the uh, once this is uh, discoverable in the apps, we've got it all connected. I will come back to you in a different video review. So. Uh, when I do, I'll pop that link at the end of this video and I'll pop it in the description down below. But what I do want to call out is that the Garmin Dive app isn't the only app that the Garmin Descent Mark II will connect to. The Garmin Connect, Garmin Golf, Garmin Explore and the Garmin Connect IQ Store are all apps that are available. The Garmin Connect app is fantastic and one that I reviewed before, so make sure you check that out too. Now, let's move on to the Mark II itself. For launch on Wednesday the 21st of October 2020, there are two options available for purchase. You have the Garmin Descent Mark II and the Garmin Descent Mark II i. Now, both are identical in terms of size, functionality and ways of working. Uh, in fact, it's probably easier to call out the differences. The Descent Mark II has the stainless steel bezel with the silicon strap 
and the Descent Mark II-I has the titanium bezel, titanium backplate with silicon strap. Now the only other but certainly the biggest difference between the two is really in the name. Remember I said at the start of this video that I stands for integration. Now the Mark II does not have air integration, that is going to be aimed at the diver that doesn't want to use air integration, is happy to carry on using an SPG and doesn't need that feature. The Mark II-I does feature air integration, it features Garmin's new subwave technology and that's what I'm going to focus on now. I can't tell you how much it pleases me that Garmin are finally sorted out air integration for the dive computer offering. Now I don't have a transmitter here with me today, in fact when I was sent the Garmin Descent Mark II-I for review there was only one transmitter this side of the Atlantic so they were certainly not going to send it to me. However, there is a plan to get in the water with one very, very soon to test out the transmitter, the technology, and what it actually performs. So as soon as we've done that, we'll be uploading that video for you guys to see. So this is probably a really good time for me to say to you, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Make sure you click on that little bell icon to be notified when that video is uploaded. Now, Garmin's offer of air integration is called Subwave. And if it lives up to the expectations of what they're promising, it is going to be an absolute game changer. And that is no exaggeration. Why? Well, you remember at the start of the unboxing, I said that they haven't used the standard VHF signal technology, which most other dive brands used. Nope, they have gone all out and incorporated sonar technology into the equation. What does that mean, I hear you say? Let me explain. Above the water, the technology uses Ant Plus. This is the same technology used in the Garmin Fitness heart rate straps. So this will mean that the range is something like eight to 10 meters. So gone are the days of having to have your dive computer six inches from the transmitter to pair it. But the magic really happens as soon as you jump into the water. When you start your dive, the sonar technology takes over and sends the tank pod information back to the Mark II-I with data refreshed every five seconds. Okay, great, you think, what's new there? Well, the sonar technology isn't restricted like the VHF radio format that other dive computer brands use, meaning the range is an incredible five to eight meters. Now I'm going to assume that the five to eight meter range is going to be dependent on what type of water you're in, whether you're in fresh or salt, and certainly what is in the water column in terms of particles and sediments. But this does open up a whole new world of opportunities, especially when you can add up to 10 Garmin pods into the equation. For example, if you and your buddy are both diving with a Garmin Descent Mark II-I and both have a Garmin pod, then you can see each other's tank pressure, air time remaining, air consumption rates, and also the battery level for each pair transmitter. Better still, you can name each transmitter. So it's perfect for the technical diver who may be diving with side mount tanks for the run gas and who may have a number of stage tanks for their accelerated decompression stops. Switching is easy and you have the confidence of being able to see the tanks clearly labelled. Now this got me thinking about a couple of questions that we had on previous YouTube review videos. One guy wanted to be able to see the contents of his son's tank and wanted to know if there was a solution out there that would enable him to do this. The Garmin Descent Mark II-I will solve that issue assuming his son is in within at least a five meter distance from his dad. Another viewer wanted to be able to see the gas contents of his students' tanks. So many dive computers allow you to add multiple pods, but with a one meter range, they would be useless at solving this. So assuming that all of the students had a Garmin Descent Mark II-I with the Garmin pod, then this is entirely feasible. Now I know the financial outlay is hugely cost prohibitive, that would mean the dive centre would need to invest in multiple Garmin Descent Mark II wires along with the pods. But the solution is there to solve that. I'll tell you what I will say is that the possibility of the range and the technology behind all of this 
absolutely fascinates me and makes me wonder what else it could be used for. So needless to say, I'm very excited to get my hand on a transmitter, get in the water with it to actually see what it can do. The features on the Garmin Descent Mark II are incredible and a huge step up when compared to the Mark I. The Mark II now features a 52mm case compared to the 51mm on the Mark I. It also boasts a much larger display screen at 36mm in diameter. It's a whole 36% bigger than the Mark I at 30mm. The Mark II also has an incredible 32 gigabytes of internal memory, allowing for more music and map storage. And the user interface and design is modeled on the brilliant Fenix 6. I also noticed how different the buttons felt during the unboxing, and I was right. The Mark II features inductive buttons, meaning that the unit is completely sealed, so there is no mechanical piece entering into the sealed dive case. The wrist-based heart rate monitor now features plus pulse ox. Uh, this measures the blood oxygen saturation, which is the level of oxygen in your blood. This is a key upgrade, and not only for divers, but also for the sports and fitness enthusiast. Please remember, for the heart rate monitor to work underwater though, the Mark II must be in contact with the skin and not over a wetsuit. The diving features on the Mark II are very similar when compared to the Mark I. The Mark II supports single gas, multi-gas, gauge, apnea, apnea hunt and four CCR modes including nitrox and trimix. The Mark II does include a new feature called tides which allows you to check the tide detail for anywhere in the world which is valuable information if you are planning a shore dive. Phone connection to the app is required for ties to work, so we'll cover that in the next video. The GPS will mark your entry and exit point on the surface, but remember GPS does not work underwater. The Mark II utilizes the ever popular Bullman ZHL16Z algorithm with fully configurable conservatisms and gradient factors. During the dive, your deco time and stop calculations are continually updated and you'll be able to see your depth, temperature, dive time, deco time and your nitrox loading. You'll also be able to view different screens during the dive in a very similar way that you did with the Mark I, uh, but by double tapping the screen. Uh, and we'll cover that once we've got this in the water in the next video too. The Mark II also has advanced mapping and sensing features. The Mark II has preloaded topography maps with optimized map themes, and the Mark II is supported by GPS, GLONASS, and also Galileo for ultimate satellite coverage. There are now 2,000 worldwide ski resort maps and an incredible 41,000 preloaded golf course maps, which makes this absolutely fantastic. Now, I know a number of divers that love their golf and their winter sports as much as they do getting into the water, so this dive computer is gonna be absolutely perfect for them. For multi-sport performance and training, the new VO2 Max allows for adjustment in weather and elevation. Uh, this is the ability for your lungs to utilize your oxygen intake, or in other words, to gauge your level of fitness. Both the Mark II and the Mark II I connect to the new Garmin Dive app. Both allow you to plan dive straight to the watch and the built-in log holds up to 200 dives. And once connected to the Garmin Dive app, your dives will be uploaded to the logbook in the app. But I think my favorite new feature is Garmin Pay. Now Garmin Pay works in pretty much the same way that Apple Pay would work. You load your card details into the Garmin Pay Secure account and you can make contactless payments with your Garmin Descent Mark II in a number of different um, retail outlet shops all over the world using your Garmin Descent Mark II. Big deal you think, you can do that with your phone. Well there's a couple of scenarios that I've got in my head where I think this would actually be a great feature. Let's say, for example, you've gone for a run. You're listening to music on your headphones that are connected to your uh, Garmin Mark II. You haven't gone out with your wallet 
on the way back, past a coffee shop, you stop, you want to get a drink, haven't got any money. No worry, you can pay with your watch. Let's say you've gone on a dive, you, you're packing up for the day, you don't want to take your wallet on the boat with you, you want to buy something from the dive shop when you get there, you haven't got your wallet. No worries, pay with your watch. I think that's a really, really good idea by them. Let's take a look at the customizable options and the menus on the Garmin Descent Mark II. The five button configuration is exactly the same as the Descent Mark I and the menu is exactly the same as the Garmin Fenix 6. Top left button is your backlight. A short press will turn the backlight on and off. It also times out after a few seconds while a long press on the same button will take you into your control center. Here you have quick access to uh, a number of links and you can set and personalize what is available to view. Uh, in here we have such things as flashlight which turns all the pixels on the screen white to act like a, a, a small torch in the dark. And then we've got things such as the compass, uh, connection to your phone, syncing the device, turning the device on and off. Here is your battery saver level, connecting to your music controls, your wallet, save location, uh, do not disturb, pool mode. So if you want to take the uh, Mark II swimming in a swimming pool and you don't want to activate the dive modes, you'd put it into pool mode. Uh, your stopwatch, those kind of things. All of this is completely editable. You can customize this as you want. A short press on the left middle button brings you into your training status and there's your history. Um, here you can see I've done one activity, uh, did a run yesterday, did a 5K run. And a long press on the same button takes you into the menus. Now we'll come back to this in more detail in just a second. The middle button also acts as an up button when you're navigating through the menus. A short press on the bottom left button takes you into the widget menu. Here you can view all of the widgets that you've got and these are fully customizable. Uh, again, we're gonna come back to the widgets in just a second. And a long press on the same button takes you into your where you can connect for your music. So this is where you would connect um, your Spotify Premium account, your Deezer Music account, or your Amazon Music account. You do need to have a connection to the Garmin Connect app uh, to add the music. Uh, this button, the bottom right, uh, sorry, the bottom left button is also the down button when you are flicking through uh, the menus for navigation. Next is the top right button. So the top right button takes you into your activity list. Here you can see all of the dive activities. Uh, and then if you keep scrolling, you can then see all of the activities that are on the Garmin Descent Mark II. So things like there's your map, run, bike, hike, golf, pool, swim, open swim, kayaking, stand up paddle boarding, breath work, triathlon, strength, yoga, classic ski, skiing, cardio, floor climb, elliptical, jump master, tactical, even alarm clocks. You can go down and add uh, additional. So these are all uh, additional activities that you can add into your menu. Indoor track, virtual run, climb, indoor biking, mountain biking. So there literally is uh, an activity menu for every kind of activity you may certainly want to take part in. Uh, the, but this button, the top right button, is also the button you would use to select an option. So it's your select button and it's also your start and stop when you're in an activity. The bottom right button is your back button. Pressing it once takes you back one step anywhere in the menu. And if you hold it down for a long press, it will take you back to your home watch screen. Now all of these buttons, all five of these buttons are editable in terms of what the action is when you do a long press and I'm going to cover that in just a moment. 
if we head into menu now, so if we go into dive setup and select dive setup, the first option is gases. So if we select gas, let's say we select single gas mode. Here you can select what gas or adjust what gas you're using, whether you're using air or nitrox, and you can also add a backup gas. Uh, and that's the same for each of the um, modes. The multi-gas mode is obviously air, and you can add different gases in. Conservatism rate, you can set whether you want high, medium, low, uh, or a custom gradient factor. Air integration here is where you would connect the transmitter, so you can add a new transmitter, uh, and you can dis decide what display uh, setup you have on your Mark II i. Here you can tell the Mark II what type of water you're in, whether you're in fresh or salt or custom. You can actually um, edit the type of water that you're in. You can adjust your PO2 factors, what type of alerts you want, whether you want a deep alert or a, um, a dive time alert, apnea surf alerts, safety stop, whether you want a three minute or a five minute safety stop, end dive delay, so a minute, uh, this is currently set that a minute after the the dive ends, the dive computer will go back to the normal uh, watch mode. You have CCR set points, backlight in here. You can adjust uh, the brightness, uh, whether you want it to time out after a certain number of seconds, or what level of brightness that you want. It's currently set at 20%, but you can obviously have that all the way up to 100. And then here is the double tap to scroll. So by having this turned on, allows you to scroll through the different dive screens during a dive. If we go back into menu and go down to watch face, here is where we can select through dozens of different types of watch face, um, ranging from digital all the way through to analog. We select this one and then if we go down to uh, customize, we can then customize the dial. So we can decide through lots of different types of dial, all different shapes and sizes. If we select this one, we can then go down and customize the hands. So this gives us lots of different hand options, different shapes and sizes once again. We can then go down to data. Now this allows us to adjust the data in any of the fields that are shown. Uh, I'll leave that as it is. We can then go down to accent color. And you can see that the hands and the numbers around the edge uh, are available in a number of different color options. So it's the second hand and the little accents around the edge. Uh, a whole rainbow of options. And then you can uh, choose between a white or a black background, depending on your mood. But lots and lots of customization options for the watch face alone. And then when you're happy with how it looks, hit on done, and then it's saved. Heading back into the menus, if we go down to widget and open up widgets, you can edit what widgets are there. So these are the widgets that are currently available in my widget options. So uh, dive log, surface interval, steps, uh, the ABC, last activity, alternative time zones, sunrise and sunset, heart rate, music controls, health stats. All of this is customizable. You can add and take out what widgets you see, but this is a really useful tool. And it's also the same for controls. If we enter into controls, these are all of the options that we have in our quick menu. So that's the long press on the top left button. Um, here we can delete and edit and add in any others that we want from our quick menu control option. Now, there are an absolute ton of different menu options, each with an absolute plethora of different menus that you can choose from. There's two that I really wanted to call out, that was Power Manager and Hotkeys. So if we head into Power Manager now, here you've got Battery Saver, Power Modes, Power Percentage Off and Battery Estimates. Battery Estimates is great because it allows you to choose between having a battery percentage or your battery shown as days, which I think is a great little option to choose between. I, I prefer it as um, days, that's the battery estimates, rather than having a percentage, so I'm gonna leave that on. 
My favourite in here is Power Modes. In here you can customise and create what functions are used for specific tasks on the Mark II. Now this obviously affects the battery level. Now let's say for example we're going to go off and do a day of dry suit diving. You can create a mode specific to what you might use. We'll create a new mode and we'll call it dry suit. I want to leave the GPS on so it recalls my entry and exit point, but I don't need the wrist heart rate monitor to be turned on because I'm wearing a dry suit. By turning this off, it increases the battery level by the number indicated with the plus symbol. Jacket mode, for example, is a preset mode for skiing. The heart rate and the phone functions are already off, but if I go into it and switch off the GPS, it will add dozens of hours onto the battery life. My other callout is the hotkey function. Head into system and select hotkeys. Here you can set configurations for what information is displayed when you hold a certain button down or a combination of buttons. Start button is the top right button. Back button is the bottom right. Down button is the bottom left. Start and down buttons are the top right and the bottom left buttons held together. The start and the up buttons are the top right and the middle buttons held together. The back and the light buttons are the bottom right and the top left buttons held together. And the back and the up are the bottom right and the middle left buttons held together. Now there is an absolute bundle of options of things that you can add as a hotkey. These are all completely configurable and you can go in and change the factory ones um, that come preset. Really like this feature. To be honest with you, I could spend days going through every single menu option, but it's just gonna to be too much for one video. I will be pulling together another video when we get a chance to get the transmitter underwater and I would like to get the Mark II compared up against the Descent Mark I and also the Shearwater Terek. Uh, so they are videos I definitely plan to do. So once again, make sure you hit that subscribe button, click on that little bell icon to be notified when those reviews are up and live. Just as a very quick comparison, I've actually got a Shearwater Terek here with me. Here you can see them side by side. I don't know how clearly it shows on camera, but the case size of the Shearwater Terek is 55 millimeters in diameter compared to the Descent Mark II at 52 millimeters in diameter. However, the display screen on the Mark II I seems just that slight fraction bigger than what the Terek does. I will definitely be reviewing both of these up against each other very, very soon. So like I say, keep an eye out for that video. A few stats on the Descent Mark II. It's got a MIP color display that's got a 280 by 280 resolution. As a comparison, the Mark I was 240 by 240. It's got a sapphire crystal watch face, so it's super tough and pretty much scratch resistant. The Mark II is depth rated to 100 meters, which is plenty and the battery life is phenomenal. As a normal watch, it will run for 21 days before it needs charging and as a smartwatch for 12 days. Garmin state you will get 40 hours of dive time, but as we found out, all of this can be increased depending on what tech you are running in the background. The final stat I haven't given you is price. For launch on Wednesday the 21st of October 2020, the Garmin Descent Mark II will have a recommended retailer price of £1,199 99 pence. If you want the Garmin Descent Mark II I version, then the recommended retailer price is, is raised to £1,399.99. The Garmin Subwave Transmitter Pod has a retailer price of £349.99. Now this is the bit in the review video where I say this is a great dive computer, but. But the thing is I haven't got a but, I haven't got a single one, I haven't got a single negative thing I can say about the Descent Mark II. 
you know, they could have taken the Mark 1 and just added air integration to it, but in actual fact, what they've done in creating the Mark 2 is an absolute masterpiece. Listen guys, I know the price is expensive, but you're paying for what you get, and this thing is phenomenal. Now listen, granted, I know I've only been using this for three days and I haven't even got it in the water yet, so how can I say all of that? But the Garmin Descent Mark 1 was my favorite dive computer of 2019. I was only peed off by the fact it didn't have air integration, but it didn't stop me from wanting one. The only reason I didn't buy a Garmin Descent Mark 1 last year was because I knew at some point they would bring out a Mark II and the Mark II would have air integration. And this is what I've been waiting for for the last 12 months. The Mark I was a fantastic dive computer. The Fenix 6, which this has the same operating system, is an incredible sports watch. In actual fact, at the start of lockdown, I was thinking about getting a Garmin Fenix 6 as a sports activity watch. I borrowed one off of a friend whose wife wasn't using hers, used it for a few weeks. I absolutely hated giving it back because it was incredible, an incredible watch. The Mark II is basically the love child of a Descent Mark I and the Fenix 6. And the Mark II i is its more intelligent brother. Now, if any of you out there are thinking about buying a new dive computer or thinking about upgrading to a new model, you know what? Just get the Mark II i. I mean, you could go out and buy the Descent Mark II, but let's be honest, who these days wants a dive computer that doesn't have air integration? Why would you not have that technology when these guys are offering something that no one else does? Five to eight meters of range? I mean, come on, it's absolutely a no-brainer. Go out, buy a Descent Mark II i, get it in the titanium. It's beautiful, absolutely stunning. Don't be put off by the price either. The technology and the capability in this make it worth absolutely every single penny and 100% I'll be buying one of these for myself. I mean, I've been waiting for this for so long. The Shearwater Terek has definitely led the pack for the last few years and deservedly so, it is a fantastic dive computer. If you go on to any social media group or any scuba forum, it is full of Shearwater lovers. And do you know what? I was one of them. Terek is an incredible dive computer. But, Mr. Shearwater, there is a new kid in town who is after your title. And you know what? I think he's going to take it. Listen, guys, I've got nothing more to say. I will be back once I've had a chance to compare these two and also once I've got this in the water with the new Subwave Sonar transmitter. But for now, I'm done. Listen, thanks ever so much for watching. Don't forget to give this uh, video a little thumbs up if you've enjoyed it. And if you think anyone you know might also enjoy it, make sure you share it. And as I said before, make sure you click on that subscribe button, click on that little bell icon to be notified when the new videos are up. But for now, thanks for watching. My name's Richard and you've been watching Black Man Photography. Take care.